Welcome to Crema Media's Mining Weekly. I'm Natasha Oudendal. With me in studio is Henan Dupria, MD of Goldrat South Africa, to discuss the implementation of the theory of constraint in the mining industry. Welcome, Henan. Thank you. Can please tell me more about the theory of constraint and what are its applications in the mining industry? To start off, um, the theory of constraints was discovered by uh, Dr. Eli Goldratt in the early 1980s. Standing on the, I mean, the shoulders of giants like Henry Ford, Taichi Ono from Toyota, Eli Goldratt followed the same original fundamental concepts followed by those two giants to develop his own much broader application now known as the theory of constraints. Just to take you through some of the fundamental concepts and how he developed the theory of constraints. The first concept described virtually by Henry Ford, Arno and Dr. Goldratt is that operations main objective is to improve flow. In order to look at that flow and get a mechanism that will guide operations how to do it. Dr. Goldratt had to distill his own version. Where Henry Ford developed the assembly line, Dr. Ono just in time, or later known as Lean, Dr. Goldratt had to develop his own application, which is um, the theory of constraints. In that sense, he recognized one of the, the major leverage points, which is that a chain is only as strong as its weakest link. By looking through that weakest link, he derived for production, the current known mechanism called drum buffer up. Widely known right throughout the industry and internationally. A third component that is fundamental to all three of these giants is that all local efficiencies must be abolished. Today, many of those local efficiencies, even how good it looks, causes severe disruption to flow. And finally, the final concept that was underpinned by all three of the giants was that you have to put a process of ongoing improvement in place to continuously balance your flow. It's fundamentally different from balancing capacities. So that's in essence uh, what the theory of constraints is all about and where it originated from. Translating the generic concepts of Dr. Goldratt into the mining industry required us to focus on something that is very specific to the mining industry. The sources of variation and interdependency is another degree you'll not find in all other organizations. Looking through those ones, we recognized that the mechanism for us to really support the objective of, um, let's call it now, continuously improving flow we recognized that local variations spread very easily throughout the system, causing the system performance to be very unstable. The fact, or to verify that, um, you can just have a look at a mine's daily output. Extremely erratic from day to day. Where is those sources coming from and how can we filter them and buffer them out? So fundamentally, we developed a mechanism called effectiveness model and the war room to basically help operations in what they should do and what they should not do to improve the flow. Then we also looked into what are those local efficient measurements and behaviors that impact the flow globally and how can we either reduce them or even stop them. Finally, uh, we had a look at the process of online improvement and through the buffer mechanisms, we've identified a support process that will highlight where are the bad variations coming from, both in size and in breadth, and how can one really focus on those ones first, get rid of them, and continuously improving the flow. So that's in essence how we translated the current generic model into a mining model now called the TOC mining. Thank you. Now, what are the benefits of it and what are the disadvantages? Benefits? We start off by um, looking at a mine's daily output, evaluating the degree of variation, 
And through that, looking through the mechanism of the effectiveness of, of that effectiveness model, we determine what is possible in terms of improving the below average variations to become productive. Early days right now, but it looks like anything from 20 to 40 percent improvement on those averages without incurring additional cost and capital. So there's a huge opportunity sitting right in front of us by focusing on improving the flow. Now there's another component, like somebody just said to me yesterday, but these tonnages virtually comes free. I said, no, there is some cost associated to it. It's a direct cost of blasting, of fuel, of transporting it, but it does not cost you more capital, does not cost you more fixed cost or office space. So yes, given the current ratios of um, profitability within the mines, uh, we have found that these additional tons exponentially improve their profitability. There's another benefit that arises the moment you improve your profitability to that degree, is that many of those mines that are lucky could expose resources, mineral resources, that previously was considered uneconomical, which means the life of mine could dramatically improve. Now there's one component in this, it's all nice story, but what about the cost? Everybody wants to know what's going to happen to cost. The cost of the fact of buffering, there's a cost involved with it. But then again, we need to carefully consider it against the cost of not buffering, the lost production. And we always look at those components in comparison and make sure that the return is always extremely high. What we have found in the initial implementations of a mine is that a lot of surplus capacity gets exposed. And we utilize that capacity fundamentally to build these buffers and to put them in place. Where we do find that we have to invest, we try to keep the investments payback to less than two months. So that's the, looking at the disadvantages. One thing about implementing the theory of constraints for mining, it is fundamental to the DNA of the company. It's not a plug and play. It is not a, just another program. If you look at the fundamental concepts of supply chains, originally verbalized by Henry Ford, then Taichi Ono, then Dr. Goldratt, we are true to those fundamentals. And unless they become part of the DNA of the company, this program will be short-lived and will be killed by other uh, paradigms. That's one of the big uh, disadvantages. And a second one is a high turnover of management staff. Would put immediately a high pressure on the company to up the, in the induction and introduction of new people into the new way. You have to do it, otherwise somebody will come not understanding the new way and implement some of those local efficiencies and those things that are counterproductive again. So those are the key major disadvantages of uh, implementing the theory of constraints in uh, mining. Yeah, now, what are you doing to roll this out? So how are you getting this to the mining companies? Good question. Uh, the Goldratt Group in Southern Africa um, we're focusing on many industries out there, of which one, by accident, over the last 10 years was mining. But we did not engage with mining on a regular basis, but uh, when they come, we did them. And over the last 10 years, we've learned that there is a specific mechanism that is very suitable for the mining. And um, we're at the point now where the refinement is to, to the level that we, would, uh, we, we, we actually started setting up a company, uh, Goldratt, for mining specifically, focusing purely on the mining industry. We've got all the solution elements and a uh, high level of confidence in terms of what we can deliver. As a um, starting phase of setting up the company, we went out to create appropriate awareness and appreciation for what it can do. For this, we tackled uh, three sectors virtually. One is shelter and senior management, for as far as we can get, all the international companies. Also, um, we looked at all the, the, the giants of mining, plus advisors that are key to the industry. 
and we've been talking to them across the board. And then finally, we are talking to the media. So those are the three that we've been exposing, and we will, I mean, this will be an ongoing process. Feedback to date is very positive, very encouraging, and very constructive. We have made so many friends out there that would like to see this to become a major success. They do appreciate deeply the fundamentals once they understand what originally Ford, Ono, and Goldad all follow the same concepts. So from that side, we're getting extremely positive and um, we will have to jack up our own uh, expert resources to match demand. Thanks. Thank you. That was Henning Dupria of Gold Rats in South Africa discussing the theory of constraint in the mining industry.